Comedian and actor Rob Brydon has a new role. He's joining forces with Princess Anne and broadcaster Claire Balding to help save a community horse riding stables. Now, Park Lane Stables in South West London offer pay if you can riding lessons to children and vulnerable people, and they need to raise a million pounds in two weeks wow. to save the site from being sold. We're going to have a chat to Rob about this in a moment. But first, here's Lorna Shaddock. There he is. There he is. <laughs> Hi. 18-year-old Dominic loves horses, especially the ones at his local stables. They have a special carriage for wheelchairs, giving him a freedom he can't get anywhere else. Dominic has nothing. He can't access anything outside of school, college. Um, he's too disabled for other disabled sports. So, and really, his world's very small, but Park Lane just opens that up massively because he's, he is part of the family here. He comes here, everybody knows him. But that family's in danger. Park Lane's owners need to sell the valuable London plot. Only buying the land themselves could save one of London's oldest stables and one of the few remaining in an accessible city location. It would mean that we could stay here forever and we could continue to serve the people that need us the most. If we were forced out to the countryside, then the, the people that need us the most wouldn't be able to get to us. The 23 horses stabled here between them offered around 3,000 riding sessions for disabled people in the year before the pandemic hit. And so even though it's only a little stables, this would leave a big hole in the heart of a community. The stables owners say they know how important its work is to the community and they're looking at the options available, but the property will likely need to be sold. Natalie's hoping that with enough funds, her registered charity can be the buyer, so the Park Lane family can stay together. Well, they've got someone great to speak on their behalf, and that is Rob Bryden, who joins us now. Good to see you this morning. Rob, I'm sure we'll talk more about why this is so worthwhile, but how did you get involved? I've never seen you as particularly horsey, part of that set. Do you saddle up yourself? Are you a <laughs> rider? The, the closer... I have a very long face. I mean, I, 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 I pass, <laughs> pass for a horse. No, it's, it's a local thing. I, I, I live in the area, and uh, I don't know how much it came across in that video, but the enchanting thing about the stables is it's in a suburban uh, setting, very close to Bushy Park, but when you first stumble upon it, you're just walking through residential streets, and suddenly there's the stable, and it's such, it's such a force for good in the area that's the basic thing you know it's a it seems that it being there is a good thing it's a positive thing and if it were to go you know so many people would would, would miss out on, on so many good things so we pass it you know during lockdown we've been on a million walks and uh, often to bushy park and we would pass these uh, stables and there's always one horse they kind of rotate them there's one who will look out onto the onto the pavement and you can stand there and just uh, stroke the horse which is about the extent of my involvement that's as close as you get <laughs> you know, i mean some skill. of the uh, some of the people that have joined forces with you we know are a lot more horsey claire balding and of course princess anne as well but it's no no mean uh, sort of small challenge this is it they've got to try and raise a million pounds by the end of February. Um, and there is a real issue during lockdown, of course, mm. for charities up and down the country and Everywhere. how little they've been able to get access to the support that they've needed uh, to keep those charities going. Look, the lockdown is, is bringing all sorts of challenges to all sorts of people. You know, personally, I, 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 we're, we're, we're just fine. But, but this is something where I just thought, well, maybe if I get involved, I can let a few more people know about it. And then if they know about it, they might want to, to help. It's a big ask. There's a lot of people asking for stuff at the moment. But this is such a, it's just such a lovely thing, you know? And it would be, wouldn't it just be such a shame if it were to go? You're absolutely right. And we're all looking in, in a time when we feel quite helpless sometimes to help, for ways to help, aren't we? And we're looking for moments of joy and things that are good. Um, what, what are your moments of joy? When we saw you were on the show, we thought, oh, it'd be so lovely to chat to Rob. A little bit of medicine from Dr. A Dr. little Bryden. bit of medicine from Dr. Bryden is just what we need. Um, what, what's keeping you smiling? How, how are you getting along? Have you got work? Have you got things that you can do? Because so many in your profession haven't. I've done uh, bits and bobs, but all the live stuff has gone. That, that, that's... For people in my position, the main impact has been live work with an audience. So 
two separate tours have been postponed. Hopefully they'll happen in the autumn. That, that, that's the new plan. Some TV stuff can happen in, in different circumstances. The series of Would I Lie to You that's on now, we did a few months ago with a very small audience in the studio and a, another small audience in a screening room so you can put their laughs together. Um, I started a YouTube channel, a kind of a Ooh, podcast yeah. thing. I, I, do it, I do it in this room. Um, just to keep busy, and I, I've loved doing that, but it's been very, you, the main thing for people like me is the live aspect, you know, getting a room full of people into a theatre um, is a challenge. Something you miss. I know, Rob, we've met and we played in the All-Star Cup a couple of years ago, a celebrity golf tournament. I think the Welsh might have won that year, which was very frustrating from the English perspective. Um, but I know as well that uh, you, with the Would I Lie to You boys, you're quite an affectionate man. You're very generous with, and tactile, I'd say. And I was listening to your brilliant podcast you did with Gabby Roslin, that Gabby Roslin podcast, which I adore, and I know you listen to it as well. And I love the story you told, which I'd love you to share this morning, because lots of people need things like this, of when you met Tom Courtney. I think it was at the BAFTAs. And, and yeah. just how affectionate you might be occasionally? Well, this was, uh, that was, I think it was the Evening Standard Film Awards and I was stood in a group and I'd met Sir Tom uh, briefly before. Obviously, I'm a huge admirer. And um, he came over to join our group. And I think I must have been speaking and he kind of leant into me. And I thought he was going to give me a little kiss on the cheek. <laughs> And, and so I thought, well, it would be rude not to reciprocate. So, but I wasn't sure. So I ended up leaning in in a very tentative manner and th therefore kissing him ever so sensitively. And I just <laughs> kissed him on his cheek. And, I, and, and, and then he went and carried on talking, but I, I couldn't stop thinking. I thought that was a bit odd. <laughs> I've just given Sir Tom... That, that was it. That was the occasion. I've just given Sir... That's after the kiss. I've just given Sir Tom a kiss. And we were... Ch there's Emma Thompson. Look. And, and I said, I said, look, I'm sorry, I have to ask, did you, did you mean to kiss me? And he said, no, not... <laughs> that's how I meant I said... Tom, Tom Courtney's one. Tom Courtney, no. And, and I... And, and he said, no, he said, but you, you seem to kiss me. So I thought it would be rude not to. <laughs> <laughs> you see, he's a man who welcomes social distancing when you're around from yeah. now on, yeah. isn't he? <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a fabulous. And I would urge anybody to listen to that uh, podcast with Gabby because you are a brilliant raconteur and storyteller. Uh, what we didn't get to the bottom of, though, and Kate and I were talking about mm. this, Gavin and Stacey, Rob, uh, we know how close you are to Bryn and how fond you are of that character and the whole experience. I think it was over 20 million people who watched the Christmas special. I think it was one of the biggest ever, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, the biggest ever. Are we going to get more, Rob? What can you share with us? Oh, I would love to, to sit here like a sort of Welsh Richard Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> well, can a man aim higher? I don't think so. But I, I, I don't know. There are certainly no plans at the moment. But the way they left it, you know, with uh, Nessa proposing to Smithy, I suspect at some point they will do another special, but I, there are no plans at the moment. Although, you know, last time with the last special, I had no idea they'd written a, a script. I, I assumed I'd, I'd hear about it on the grapevine, but they were very secretive and uh, so, so who knows? Well, you're already halfway there as a Welsh Richard Arnold with an inappropriate kiss. <laughs> so you're making great strides in that direction. Yes. And we just hope that, you know, it does come back because we all need it. And as you say, we, we've been loving your YouTube channel and your podcast as well. Great to talk to you.